Hi, it's Liana with A Serendipitous Life. So tonight I'm going to be making a hodgepodge of veggies from the garden. It's sort of a hash. Um, I don't have a recipe, it's just something I'm throwing together super quick as a side to go with dinner tonight. Allison made a fabulous meatloaf the other night and we're having leftovers, but we don't have a side. So let me show you the veggies that I have. I have some tatsoi, which is kind of like a bok choy. I have just a handful of green beans. I've got a couple of yellow squash from the garden. I've got some arugula, not enough to make a salad. I got a few sprigs of one kind of kale and a few sprigs of another kind of kale. And actually, you know what? This is a combination of kale and collards together because I had some walking stick kale out there. So, oh, and I have some green onions, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut all this up. I'm going to toss it in some oil and I'm going to also put in some butternut squash that I got out of the garden back in June because I think that'll just be good in it. And it'll just kind of be like a hash in a way. So let's see how it goes. First, I'm going to peel this butternut squash. This isn't the easiest job to do. First, I'm just going to take and slice off the top. And I'll put all this stuff in the compost. And actually, this isn't too bad. This is a smaller butternut squash, so I guess it's not terrible. And also, I think a lot of the problem too is when you get butternut squash from the store, you have no idea how old that thing is. Because I know I've gotten them before and put them in my uh, pantry and within a week, they're gone bad. Now these I grew in the spring of this year. This is now November the 21st. And this is, I picked them in, I picked the first batch in May. We've gone through all those. I gave away a lot, we ate a lot. And this is from the batch that I picked in June. And they are still perfect. Like the only thing I could see was that the stem was pretty funky. Who cares about that? Um, so I highly recommend growing butternut squash. It was so easy. You just have to have a little space because it does vine. But if you don't have space, you could always trellis it. Um, and just support them as they get heavy with like a, a stocking or um, a mesh bag of some sort like you get for produce. Um, and I mean, I love these things. I like making soup with them. I like making hashes like this. I like doing like a buttery sage, um, like um, saute out of it. You could do, do it with like on the sweet side, you can do it on the savory side with cheese. I mean, there's all sorts of things you can do with it. So, next, after you peel it, you wanna slice it in the middle. And I'm actually going to give these seeds to the animals because they love them. Um, I could save some of these seeds, but this is a kind of small squash. I don't really want to save the seeds from this one because um, it's probably not developed enough to grow a good um, sized fruit. So let me get a spoon and I'm going to scoop this out. But yeah, these seeds are great for the animals. Um, the goats, any kind of pumpkin seed or squash seed is really good for them because it helps um, to repel intestinal worms. Um, it's great for the chickens. They love them. Um, if you have any other animals, um, it's good for them too. So once you get all the seeds out, there's one and two. And now, once I have all the seeds out, I'm gonna go ahead and cube this up into little squares, because I want this to cook down pretty quickly so that we can um, get it going with everything else. So I'm gonna put all my 
cups in a little bowl so that this can go out to the animals later. Um, I also keep a little compost um, container on my counter, which I want to give this to the animals, but with the compost container, I like to save that and I put it in my garden. Um, if you have a compost heap, you can put it in that. But I have a keyhole garden, and in my keyhole garden, you put the compost just straight in it, and it's going to um, break down and make its tea and feed and water over time. So now we're going to cube it up, and I'm going to probably do about one inch cubes with this. All right, so I've got some yellow squash, I've got some butternut squash. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my greens. I do have just a few little random green beans that I'm gonna throw in here just because there's not enough to um, cook like on their own. So I'm just gonna chop them up small and throw it in here. Um, I'm gonna get these little stems off of here first. These are like a traditional um, bush bean these green ones like this, and then these are the dragon tongue bush beans. Um, they both taste pretty similar in my opinion. I think that the dragon tongue is a little meatier in texture, but that's about it really. The animals will like this as well. Also, really want to get into growing more herbs and plants for medicine. Um, I really would like to get my family using more herbal type of things and less, you know, like pharmaceuticals. Not that there's anything wrong with that. My wife is a nurse. Um, there is a time and a place for medical invention, interventions, not inventions. There's a time and a place for medical interventions, but unfortunately, I think we have too many of those, and I've seen what too many antibiotics will do. Um, it tears you up, it makes you have a weaker immune system, um, and I just would love to see getting my family healthier without all of that. So, there's my TED Talk. <laughs> Just being silly here. Um, so now I'm gonna chop up the arugula. I've never actually cooked arugula, so let's see how it comes out. I'm just doing a, a rough chop here. All right, so now I've got some kale. With kale, I don't like this stem. I mean, you can eat it, but it's not the tastiest to me. So I will cut it out. I'm going to do a little rough chop of this. And now I'm going to throw in some. Now, I will be honest, I picked some collard greens and I picked some um, walking stick kale outside at the exact same time. And I don't know which one is which because they look exactly the same. So, it don't matter because it's all going in the same place, right? It's a green and we're going to eat it. Yes, that is the idea. I'm going to give this one a rough chop. So, and now I've got some tatsoi, which is a relative cousin to bok choy. I love some bok choy. And I like the stems on the on the bok choy type of veggies. They're good. They're a little, they got a crunch, but they're not like a yucky crunch. It's a good crunch. All right. So there we go. 
Oh, and I got some green onions, which I have not rinsed yet. So let me rinse those off. So here in the South, I never really understood what the different kind of onions were, but long day onions are made for up north, and technically we can grow them here, but they are green onions here. They never will grow an actual bowl. Fun fact. Okay, so now we got all that together. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on this. sprinkle of actually I'm gonna wait with the seasoning I'm gonna season it on the um, actual pan that I'm gonna do that way I can get an even seasoning now I'm gonna just take and I'm going to cover this up shake it up alright that way we get our oil distributed evenly now I'm going to get a pan ready with some aluminum foil and show you the next step. All right, so I'm going to lay this out on this pan like so, kind of distribute it. Now I'm going to take and put a pinch of salt. This is just some Himalayan pink salt nice hefty pinch. Now I'm going to put some, I don't have any fresh garlic, I wish I did, but instead I have this great pepper garlic that we got um, locally from the Pepper Palace. Um, actually, it is not local, it is from Tennessee, um, but we bought it local. So we got this garlic pepper that I'm going to put on it. It's kind of like a granulated garlic, so it's more like fresh than just what you would buy at Walmart. Um, I'm going to do some sage because I love sage on butternut squash. I think it's delicious. I'm going to do it pretty hefty. I didn't get a lot of sage in my herb garden, so that's definitely something that this coming year I'm going to be growing a lot of sage because I really love sage on a lot of things. And I'm just going to kind of massage it in and distribute it around, make sure everybody has some of the yummies. And I'm going to place this in the oven on um, at 350 for about a half of an hour. And when we take it out, I'm going to drizzle some balsamic vinegar on it. Um, you don't have to do that, but I come from, I, I don't come from, but I believe that good vegetables, really all food, but good vegetables, if you want vegetables that have good flavor, you need fat. That fat can be bacon grease, which I would have loved to put bacon on this, but I didn't have any fresh uh, defrosted out of the freezer. Um, you need fat, so you need like olive oil, butter, some browned butter would be good on this. Um, I had olive oil, so that's what I used. Um, bacon grease, um, anything like that. You need salt is number one important. Herbs and things like that are good, but if you have fat, salt, and acid, it's going to be amazing. So this is going to go into the oven for 30 minutes, and I'll show you when it comes out. Nicely roasted, and now I'm going to put just a little bit of gargonzola cheese on it just to give it a little bit of punch. And my absolute favorite balsamic glaze, just mm, so good. And it looks pretty too. Here it is plated on our fine china. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. Mmm. That is good. Very good. So if you want, instead of putting vinegar on it, you could put a little bit of lemon juice, lime juice, something like that. Um, this is really good. So if you like this video and you would like to see more, please hit like and subscribe. And I just want to say thank you and God bless our mess.
拜。